Hello everyone, welcome to the course of Digital Signal Processing. Today we will finish off our chapter number 3 that is of C-transform. In previous lecture we discussed few properties of C-transform that is of linearity property. We discussed time shifting property, multiplication by an exponential, differentiation property. Today we will discuss convolution property, time reversal property and conjugation property. And then we will finish off this chapter. So let's get started. So in conjugation of a complex sequence, if your sequence is conjugated, the Z transform will be conjugated and ROC will remain same. So in conjugation property, whenever this signal in X of N signal is conjugated, the Z transform will be conjugated. However, there will be no change on the region of convergence. Whereas in time reversal property, if time is reversed and x of n is conjugated, the z transform will be conjugated and in place of z, we will have 1 by z conjugate. Because of this, the region of convergence will be opposite. It means that the region of convergence which was previously Rx, Rx as you can see in previous property, it will now be 1 by Rx. However, if x of n is real, so for real se sequence, x of n or x conjugate of n, both will be same. It means that we have only time reversal. It means that we have x of minus n. You need to understand that if a signal is real, we do not conjugate a complex sequence. Okay? Because the conjugate of a real sequence will be same. So x of minus n, the z transform will be x of 1 by z. It means that only the region of convergence will be opposite. If the region of convergence was x rx, now it will be 1 by rx. Okay, so we will look into this with the help of few examples so let's move on to next slide and check out the examples of this time reversal property so here in this sequence example 3.18 time reverse exponential sequence if you look at this input sequence x of n is equal to a raised power minus n u of minus n so it is similar to our example number 3.1 however what we are going to do we are just going to replace Previously, we have 1 divided by 1 minus a is z inverse. So, we have replaced this z inverse with z. Now, if I just simplify it and I multiply it with a inverse, z inverse, so I will have this term, okay? So, just in order, just to give the this kind of an form, so what I have to do, I have to multiply this with a inverse, z inverse divided by minus a inverse, z inverse and this will be minus 1. So if I simplify it, I will have minus a inverse, z inverse divided by 1 minus a inverse, z inverse. So we know the z transform of a raised power n u of n is z transform of this is 1 divided by 1 minus a z inverse so whereas for this the z transform will be 1 divided by 1 minus a z now in order to give it a proper form what we have to do we have to multiply and divide with minus a inverse z inverse now the region of convergence which was previously for this sequence the region of convergence was z mod greater than a mod now the z region of convergence will be opposite the region of convergence will be z mod less than a inverse okay so one thing is that the condition is flipped the greater than sign is changed to less than sign along with a is changed to a inverse so this is time reversal property let's move on to next slide so convolution of a sequence according to the convolution property if two signals are convoluted in time they will be multiplying in z domain and the region of convergence will be the intersection of two sequences so for example one sequence is x of 
x1 of k the other is x2 n minus k there is first signal the second is just like a response and we are like convoluting because this is the formula of convolution so if i take the z transform of this whole y of n y of n z is per minus n substituting the value of y of n now you can see that the this term this is y of n let's move on to the next slide and see the further derivation now if we interchange the order of summation we we know that k is applying on this x1 of k and then n is applying on this because this term does not have any n so if i just realign and interchange the order of summation now changing the index of summation for example n minus k if i say n minus k is equal to m i have to replace this with m this n will be replaced with n is equal to m plus k so in place of z raised power minus n we will have z raised power m plus k okay or i can say z raised power minus m dot z raised power minus k so this is z raised power minus m and this is z raised power z raised power minus k now if you look at this this is the formula of z transform of x to of z and if you look at this term and z raised power minus k this is formula of z transform so this one is for x1 of z and this term is for x2 of z so this proves that if we are going to convolve two signals in time domain they are multiplying in z domain and the region of convergence is the intersection of these two let's move on to next slide in example 3.19 evaluating a convolution using z transform so we are provided with y x1 of n x2 of n and we have to find out x1 convolving to x2 and find out y of n but instead of convolving x1 and x2 we know the z transform of x1 of n is 1 divided by 1 minus a is inverse with region of convergence c mod greater than a mod and the z transform of x2 of n is 1 divided by 1 minus a is inverse z mod greater than 1 now con multiplying x1 of z with x2 of z we yield we get this term and just for the sake of simplification we can just simplify it so that we have a pole at c is equal to a and we have a pole at c is equal to 1 and then we have two zeros at c is equal to zeros now if you look at this equation we have to find y of n from here so how we can find y of n we have to take inverse c transform it means that we have to find out the values of coefficients a or b so you can apply partial fraction on this y of n on this y of n you can apply partial fraction so let's move on to next slide and see the values of those constants sequence y of n can be obtained by determining the inverse e transform so inverse e transform this is after applying partial fraction so the value of a is 1 divided by 1 minus a and the value of b is a divided by 1 minus a so now i can take the inverse of this the inverse of this is u of n the inverse of this is scaling with a n plus 1 u of n because usually we have 1 divided by 1 minus a is inverse its inverse c transform is a is for n u of n but once we have a here it means that a is multiplied with a n so bases are same power will add so a n plus 1 and this whole is scaling so just apply the partial fraction on previous equation and you can have this value 1 divided by 1 minus a for a constant and a divided by 1 minus a for b constant so let's move on to our final slide and let's just recap this chapter number 3 so now we know that if we have a sequence x of n its c transform is x of z with region of convergence rx if we have sequence x1 of n its 
z transform is x1 of c with the region of convergence rx1 if we have sequence x2 of n is z transform is x2 of c region of convergence rx2 now if both are scaled and added the z transform will be scaled and added and region of convergence will be intersection if time domain signal is delayed the z transform will be multiplied with z dash power minus n naught region of convergence will remain same except the possible addition or deletion of the origin or infinity the pole either will be added or removed from origin or infinity if we have multiplication with exponential multiplication with x of n the z transform will have the form x of z divided by z naught it means we have to replace z with z divided by z naught and the region of convergence will be scaled by that z naught now if we have n multiplied with x of n we will have derivative property that is derivative of x of z into minus z region of convergence will remain unchanged if x of n is if we take the complex conjugate of x of n the z transform will have conjugate 2 the region of convergence will have no change if we have if we take the real of x of n then the real of x of n is equal to 1 by 2 x of z plus conjugate whereas for imaginary we have to subtract these now if we flip that signal if we simply flip the time domain signal that is x of minus n then the region of convergence will be flipped and the condition will be reversed as we have seen in the previous example so x conjugate of minus n if x is real then we will have only x of minus n so because there is a conjugate and there is a time flip the z transform will be x conjugate 1 divided by z conjugate and lastly if we two signals are getting involved in time domain they will be multiplied in z domain and their region of convergence will be intersection of rx1 and rx2 and initial value theorem says that x of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 so input is 0 for n less than 0 and x of z is equal to x of 0 for limit z approaches to infinity so these are the z transform properties hope you get it thank you very much